Mental decluttering is like decluttering physical items. You set systems, habits and goals to get rid of things that don't really serve you anymore, to create more space for things that actually matter. But with all the tasks, commitments and distractions, this might not be always so easy. So in this video, I will share with you seven tips for mental minimalism that have helped me massively. The first one is to master your survival, to open up some room for creativity, curiosity and for things that truly matter to you, to declutter that headspace, you need to meet your basic needs, master your survival. And this might be very beginner level stuff for many of you, but think about it. If you have constantly financial struggle, struggles or you are struggling to find a nice home from a safe area, you are living currently in a place that there's a lot of crime, for example, how are you supposed to declutter your mind? How are you supposed to feel stress-free? It's very difficult. As an example here, we could take the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So you need to meet at least the basic, like lower level stuff before you should move anywhere in your life, I would say. And of course, if you are, for example, a monk, this is very different to you than if you are a normal like Westerner in this world. But you need to figure this out for yourself. Meeting these basic needs and reaching this certain level helps a lot to reduce the stress so that then you can make better decisions. You can navigate life and challenges with so much more ease. It's so much easier to tackle anything in life when you have a calm mind. When you have security and stability in your life, you can focus on other things like self-care or aligning your actions with your core values that is a little bit higher in this hierarchy of needs. The second one is accept the mess. Don't be afraid of life getting messy and you having to deal with a bunch of stuff and life getting complex because it will no matter what you do. So you might as well pursue the life you love and things getting messy than just doing something else, I guess. Accepting this, I think, involves a lot letting go of the control, not needing always to know what is the next step or what is the direction of your life. I think it's good to have some ideas, but I believe values are so much more important than achievements and having these big goals that you absolutely must reach. A big source of suffering is knowing that you are meant for more or you could be doing better. You are not as good as you could be. And I think we all have this and I think it's something that never really goes away in our lives. So what is good that you really sit with it and accept it? I think we are meant to solve problems and that makes us happy. But still be aware of this trap of anything. We could talk about the trap of minimalism, for example, here. I got a comment about this uh, some time ago that minimalism is just a trap because you always want to get rid of more and more stuff. And I think that that is absolutely true. It can reach that level that you want zero mess in your life. Everything needs to be always looking perfect. But I think you can get hooked to anything in life. And this doesn't necessarily mean that minimalism is bad. I think it's actually a very good thing. You just, just need to keep things balanced and accept the mess. Just as there is beauty in order and symmetry, I think there's also beauty in mess, chaos and imperfection. The next tip to declutter your mind is to find priorities because not everything matters equally. You need to find your priorities and focus on them first. I think many of us get trapped in this check off game where we are just doing things constantly, checking off things from our to-do list, but we are not even sure if those things are important to us. It's the same thing when we are taking stuff in our house. Hello? When we are taking stuff in our house and we are not thinking are they important to us or not? Are they bringing value to our life or not? Focusing on these priorities and eliminating distractions help a lot to declutter your mind and reduce the decision fatigue when you have a very clear idea on your priorities, your time, where you want to put your attention, what is distraction, 
what is not, life just starts to feel very simplified. And I think this is one of those things where you get better over time. You are not born to be good at this. So regularly reevaluating what is important to you or not, and am I focusing on these things or not, is a very good habit to have. The fourth one is get into flow. When you are engaged in activities that you absolutely love or that require your full attention, you are naturally focused on only that thing, temporarily at least decluttering your mind. Doing activities like this reduce the noise in our heads so much and they are usually based on this intrinsic motivation so it's so easy to lose the track of time and be fully immersed in that activity we could call this narrow focus activities or in general narrow focus so basically doing and usually this involves as well a goal you are doing it for a purpose there's maybe an outcome that you want to reach this could be playing some games like board games where you need to be fully focused or doing some sports that's why i absolutely love sports because when i'm doing them i'm nowhere else i'm just there in many of my running competitions i like my mind is just blank it's empty because I'm fully focused in that moment, doing the next movement. I feel like my life in general is very extremely simple in that. I have just one goal to do, and that is to run. As well, many creative things I think fit into this, like playing music or painting, drawing, things like this. These are not necessarily like permanent things, but something to balance out your normal day, to declutter your mind after, for example, a long day at work. And since that was the narrow focus, of course, next one is the open focus. So activities that don't have any outcome or goal, it's basically just being. And there are so many different ways to do this, of course, like mindful breathing, body scan meditations, gratitude meditations, visualizations, I think fit here as well. When you are having these open focus moments, when you are simply being, it gives you the space to explore the depths of your own consciousness. If you do this regularly, like I have done this for so many years, you will have moments of this open focus in everyday life. Like now, right here, I could have just five seconds and get into that like mode. I don't know how could I call it, but you understand what I mean and feel so much inner peace because I have done this daily for so many years. These days I do this to declutter my mind every single day using an app called Aura, which is extremely helpful. They have so many of these meditation and relaxation tracks, including all the ones that I mentioned before. And sometimes I just listen to rain sounds or calming music using their customizable soundtracks just before going to sleep, for example. If you have never tried meditation or if you have had it as a practice for multiple years, like me, I suggest to simply test their app using the free trial link below in my description and see if their incredible tracks work for you as well. The next one is so simple and short, that is to simplify the next step. If you are lost, the answer is education. If you are educated, the answer is execution. If you are executing, the answer is consistency. So whatever you are doing, there's always the next step that you should do. Of course, in many aspects of life, you could be way ahead and you just need to be consistent. But in others, you have no idea where you should be and you need to educate yourself. Going back to the first one, let's say you are living in a neighborhood that is unsafe, then educate yourself. What would be a better place? Or if money is a problem for you, creating so much stress and you cannot calm your own head because of that, then educate yourself. Find the ways that you could fix that situation. So identify in which point of this scale or in these three things you are now in, in the things that are creating clutter in your head and then clarify your goal. Where do you want to go next with this thing? The seventh one is actually very, very important. I think the biggest brain fog creator, especially for me, and that is digital detox or actually digital detox is not the brain fog creator, but using phone, using technology. So you should do digital detox every once in a while. That's what I mean. Especially like this extended screen time, using it so many hours in a day and watching this fast paced 
content consume my mind a lot. I cannot do that before I'm supposed to do something important. Like especially filming these videos. There's no way if I have been watching some videos before this or other things that I could film this. I need a calm mind. I need a decluttered mind. So digital detox is basically a period of time where you are without your phone or without your laptop. Whatever is the most difficult thing for you or maybe all of them. You decide that. And I suggest to start very small. For example, having some hours without it. Currently, I am in the middle of nowhere and it's very easy to do that, to not scroll my phone. The internet has been so bad here. Anyway, I have a book with me, a journal with me. I can do other things. I don't need to be constantly on my phone. And then when you become more comfortable with this, then gradually increase the time and set specific goals for yourself. Maybe have a phone-free evening at the start and then it becomes three hours and then you might have at some point completely phone-free days and it doesn't mean that you need to do this every single day but intentionally set up times where you don't use that especially if you believe this to be a difficult thing for you something that creates that clutter in your mind you can replace the time that you would spend with your devices with something else or not. It's completely up to you if you want to pursue some hobbies or do something else or then basically do nothing. Have that open focus in there. If you would like to test the Aura Health meditation app for free, click the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to stay kind and meaningful in your own beautiful journey. See you in the next one. Ciao.